guys, in this video we're gonna be setting up Shrine to upload files to our Rails application. Now we covered Shrine in a much, much older version a long time ago on GoRails, but we're gonna be covering Shrine version 3.2, which is the latest version. And things have changed a bit since the last episode, so I wanted to cover that. Um, today. So Shrine, if you aren't familiar, is a modular file upload system for Ruby apps in general, but definitely works very well with Rails. And the way it works is you create a database column on your model, and then you use the Shrine attachment and give it the name of that column, um, or what the attachment should be called, and it will store all of the data in this name plus underscore data. So image data would be where this would all get stored in your database in this example. Then you can have access to the image and the URL and all of the other metadata and storage information you might want to know about your files. Then you have a bunch of plugins. For example, the derivatives plugin allows you to generate thumbnails. And you can use the Minimagic library from the image processing library that's uh, by the same author and you can have it generate thumbnail images, for example. You can also use FFmpeg to transcode video, convert a video into a GIF or something. There's all kinds of options you can do with this. So it's far, far more flexible than active storage, and Shrine is the uh, default that I would use for uploading files because it's just so flexible. So the getting started portion of the guide is where you want to follow. Um, we're going to follow what it's currently having us do, but you might want to check this out if you're watching this later on in case anything has changed. So let's get started by creating a new Rails application with the Jumpstart template. This is just going to set up Bootstrap and Devise for us so we have something nice to look at by default, but we don't need any of that for Shrine. While we're waiting for our Rails app to start up, let's go ahead and take a look at the Shrine configuration. So Shrine has an option for storages. You need to define the cache in the store. The cache is used for temporary uploads, like a upload that goes to the cache, but your validations and your form fail, and so it's rendered from the cache when the errors are displayed, and then the user doesn't have to submit that file a second time. And in fact, that's how the cache detachment data and restore cache data uh, plugins work. They actually make that work for you. So then the permanent storage is the store directory. And usually you keep that as a separate directory from your cache. So you can tell which ones um, are permanent and which ones can be deleted after 30 days or something. So your cache directory, you can configure to clear out um, after X number of days when you want to. Then you set up things like your Active Record or SQL plugin to store the information in the database. And then there's a ton of other options. So if you want to do direct uploads, there's a pre-signed uh, endpoint that you can use as a plugin, and that will allow you to have the user go and contact your Rails app and say, hey, I would like to upload this file. Your Rails app says, okay, let me give you a token that's valid for doing that, and then the browser can upload with that token, the file to your S3 account. So it's just getting permission from your Rails app. Um, there's all kinds of things on extracting metadata. If you need to do anything like pulling out the image dimensions, you can do that from here or um, whatever else you might want for videos or other things. File processing is important um, and that is one of the things that's crucial to this that active storage doesn't do very well. If you wanna upload videos to active storage, it's hard to transcode them. But with Shrine, you can use backgrounding and you can use the, um, the other plugins to go ahead and do any of that work that you would want. So the derivatives plugin allows you to call Minimagic, for example, to create different image sizes depending on what you need for your application. There are also some really handy file validation helpers that you can use to validate the file type and the extension and all of that stuff as well. And that's definitely something a lot of people request and something Shrine covers perfectly. So let's dive into actually implementing Shrine now that our Rails app is created. So we're gonna go into our application and we're gonna open up our code base. We're gonna go to the gem file and we'll add gem Shrine. And we want the latest version of that, which is 3.2. And we wanna go up here to the image processing line and add that gem. And this should be the latest version of that. So let's go ahead and run bundle to install that. But I wanna point out here, image processing, it's used for creating those various different sizes of images. So if you need to do cropping or any other image manipulation for generating 
avatars or thumbnail sizes, you can go use that gem for that. And it's created by the same author, so it's great. Um, so with that said, we can go into an edit config initializer shrine.rb and we'll paste in this example here. So we'll take that, paste it in, and I want to point out that we have three different options for storage that are out of the box. We have memory and S3. Those options are going to allow you to upload to any one of those locations. And for example, you can say rails.m.test. We might want to do something similar to this, but we want to use the memory uh, location or storage. And this memory doesn't take any options or doesn't need any, so we can get rid of that. And we'll leave it like so. Then for all other environments, we would be using the file system. And you could also set this up so that production is the only one that uses S3 and so on. So we're not going to do that in this example, but that is what you would do. Then Shrine operates on plugins, like I mentioned before. Active Records, the one we need for that. We don't need the rack file, and we want these two for handling validation errors. And I'll show you how to set that up as well. And then you can go through and add like your file validation ones for Shrine plugin validation and validation helpers. And I'll show you how we can set up those as well. So let's go ahead and create a model for this. Rails generate scaffold photo, the title and an image data text column. That's gonna set up our model with the required attribute for Shrine. And then we need to go into our app folder and create a uh, directory in here and we'll call it uploaders. And inside there, we can add a file called image pro, um, image uploader.rb. Class image uploader inherits from shrine and that is it for now. We won't do anything fancy yet, but we'll add it in a minute. So inside of our photo um, model, we can say include image uploader attachment image and then we can go into our photos scaffold um, and change all of the image data references to image because we want to assign our file to the image uh, attribute not the image data attribute so we'll change that we'll go to our form and we'll change that as well and instead of a text area we want a file field for that and then our photo show.html.erb can display the photo image data for now. I'll show you how that gets filled out and then we can change that to actually embed the image. So let's go ahead and run our Rails server and we'll open that up in the browser and we'll go to photos slash new whenever that is available and we'll upload an image. So here we go, we have our form, we can add test title, and we can go and grab an image and create our photo. This is gonna show us the image data contents. As you can see, it's JSON that's been serialized into a text column. And we can simply go through and uh, replace that with an image tag to at photo image underscore URL. If at photo.image. So if there's not one present, uh, photo.image will return nil and will simply not give us an object back. So there's our image, just a placeholder image that I have lying around and that works perfectly. Now what about the case where you upload a photo and validations fail, like I forget to fill out the title. So let's go ahead and go to our uh, photo model and add validates title presence as true and go and choose an image and create a photo. Now this is currently going to fail and it's going to lose reference to our cached image. So what we need to do is actually go through um, our shrine docs and set it up so that the cached image is kept inside of the form. Now inside the getting started page, there's a link or a piece of code that shows you how to do this. You can grab that and put it in your form for your photo 
and it simply needs to go before your file field and the browser does not submit the file field if um, there was no selected field so it would actually submit the hidden field by default. Um, so we're going to say hidden field for our image and the value for this is going to be instead form.object.cached image data and we want to actually display a preview of that image if there's a cached one so it knows uh, the user knows that it's saved so we're say we're going to say image tag form.object.image url just like normal if form.object.cached image data so that's going to make sure we can check if there is an image for that and we can uh, display that out and you can choose to override it if you need to. So that's going to allow you to persist that between uploads and if we create that and we didn't submit a new file then we'll use the cached version of that file. So everything's taken care of for us in that case which is awesome. So um, that is how we're going to handle our restore and cached image stuff. There's nothing too fancy to that, but you just want to make sure that you add the hidden field and the preview of it so the user knows they don't need to re-upload the file and you should be good to go. So let's also take a look at validating the attachments content type so we can make sure that a user is uploading an image if we're asking for them to upload an image. Um, these validation helpers, while the docs aren't super clear, um, basically the plugin goes in your initializer and the attacher validate goes in your uploader. So if we were to grab that, we can go into our image uploader, paste this in, and this is going to validate that we have an image of JPEG, PNG, or WebP, and uh, the size cannot be more than five megabytes. Um, so that is the example and if we were to go and create a new photo um, and we uploaded a PDF on accident or something, this will say image type must be of one of image JPEG, PNG, or WebP. So that's going to validate those uh, content types and you have to be a little bit careful with this because uh, the content type it's actually going to be submitted by your browser, but if there was a malicious user that was saying, here's a PDF, but it's actually a PNG, um, you wouldn't want to trust what the user sent over as the content type. You'd want to actually validate the content type, the file uh, server side. And there's uh, definitely a plugin for doing that with Shrine. I forget the name of it, but it's one of those tools you can install as an extra plugin to actually validate the content type or, or detect it based upon the file contents rather than what the browser tells you because you can't always trust that. And really that's about it. Um, Shrine is very easy to use. If you want to add other things um, in here, you can go into your uploader, basically add uh, your definitions inside of this file and that will determine how it works. So you can create an image uploader, an avatar uploader that creates different sizes, maybe has different requirements, a video uploader that will transcode video into the browser formats, and so on. So you can have lots of different options here in uh, your uploaders. And then I like to organize them under the uploader's file, under app, and that basically just helps separate the stuff out from your database models and other classes that you would have. So as this grows and you have multiple types of validations that you need for different types of file uploads, you can go add these in as their own classes, contain all of that logic inside your uploader and define all of them in a single folder. So that is really, really handy when it comes to uploading files. So that's it for this episode. Trine is really awesome. And in the next one, we'll talk a little bit about testing your file uploads with Shrine.